Hello everyone, this is Dr. Costa. Welcome to Paces Station 2 podcast and today's topic is both lower limb weakness. Today's case is Mrs. Jenny, 28 years old, has been complaining of progressive both lower limb weakness for 3 days. Please take complete history from her and manage her concerns. You would get this case outside of your examination room and you would have a total of five minutes time to think about it and write something about it on a piece of paper. You should use this time wisely to formulate a list of differential diagnoses for both lower limb weakness. Here I have created a list for you. You should keep all the conditions in your head while you are taking the history and you should exclude these medical conditions one by one. We all know botulism can cause paralysis of skeletal muscles of any body part so this would be in our list of dd and the short history of three days goes along with the botulism so we should ask about any intake of canned food poliomyelitis patients should ideally give us a longer history than three days but since it is a history taking station not a brief clinical history station like station 5 so we should keep all possible dds here and we should exclude everything to make the examiners very happy similarly diphtheria can cause both lower limb weakness so we would ask the patient about recent history of respiratory infection similarly we would exclude paralytic rabies by asking about history of any animal bite and for inflammatory causes GBS is a very important cause because it can cause ascending paralysis of both lower limbs and it also goes in line with the history of three days of both lower limb weakness. Spinal cord compression can also cause both lower limb weakness but this type of conditions would also cause problems in sensory pathways and it may cause spasticity. Spinal cord infarction can also cause both lower limb weakness but brain infarction or stroke usually causes the single lower limb weakness. The demyelinating disease like transverse myelitis or even the multiple sclerosis in spinal cord can cause both lower limb weakness. The onset and speed of progression of both lower limb weakness is very important because spinal cord infarction or spinal cord stroke can cause lower limb weakness within minutes whereas demyelinating disease like multiple sclerosis or acute transverse myelitis would take some time at least a few hours to few days to cause both lower limb weakness. Other conditions like HSP hereditary spastic paraparesis can also be a cause of both lower limb weakness here we would see spasticity and there might be positive family history as well muscular dystrophy would probably not be present in this case because duchenne and baker's muscular dystrophy symptoms appear earlier inclusion body myositis can be a cause but it also causes pain diabetes causes peripheral neuropathy it primarily damages the sensory nerves but in long term it can cause damage in motor nerves as well so it can cause both lower limb weakness but this type of patients usually give a long history hypothyroidism should be kept in our mind and another condition like charcot marie tooth syndrome can cause both lower limb weaknesses plus different types of deformities in both lower limbs like high arched feet and inverted champagne bottle deformity Please be mindful that all the things I have said so far should be kept resonating within your mind outside the examination room within 5 minutes of time. And at the end of 5 minutes you would hear a bell ringing and with that sound you should enter the examination room. Within the examination room you should ideally do these 8 things. At first you should sanitize your hand and introduce yourself to the patient. You should not take more than 30 seconds to introduce yourself. So practice it with your friends against a ticking clock.
An example of a short introduction can be like this. Hello, I am Dr. Costa, one of the PACES candidates here today. Are you Mrs. Jenny, 28 years of age? The patient or surrogate would say, yes, I am. Then tell your agenda like, I have known that you have both lower leg weaknesses for last three days. Is it right? The patient would say, yes, it's right. Then simply inform her that you are here to take complete history about her illness and you would also take some notes but this communication and these notes would be highly confidential. With that said you can complete your introduction part and move on to the second part which is analysis of complaint. You can ask the patient can you tell me more about your leg weakness please and the patient would start talking. You should ask about OK8. O stands for onset. When did your limb weakness start exactly? Suddenly or gradually? C stands for course. Is your leg weakness coming on and off or is it remaining at the same level all the time? Is it increasing, decreasing or remaining same? A stands for aggravating and relieving factors. The aggravating factors may be any history of recent carbohydrate rich diet, any heavy exercise recently, any history of stress and infection in recent time. D stands for duration. You already know that she has been complaining of both lower limb weakness for three days. So here you can ask her that is it the first time you are experiencing the problem or did it happen before because if she has multiple sclerosis then she would have a previous history. E stands for extra points. Here some extra questions can be about the gait of the patient. So you can ask do you drag both feet at the side to check for spastic gait or do you lift your feet high off the ground when you walk to check for high stepping gait in peripheral neuropathy and finally is your gait waddling from side to side to check for waddling gait. One thing I would like to mention you that you should not try to inspect patient's feet or legs during history taking because here you are expected to take only the history not to find out any clinical findings. So you should ideally look at the patient's face and do the eye contact and take the history face to face. This video is sponsored by Costa Medic. If you are a medical doctor looking to get involved in medical research but you don't know much about biostat, statistics software, data analysis and result writing, then Costa Medic offers you a course which would enable you to perform data analysis and result writing for your future research projects. The course is designed for the complete beginners so no prior knowledge of research and statistics are required. The course link is given in the description box. Next you should ask about the point 3, the differential diagnosis. To exclude botulism you can ask about any history of canned food intake or any history of skin infection recently. To exclude poliomyelitis you can ask do you have any deformity in your legs. To exclude diphtheria you can ask her do you have any history of recent infection in your lungs. I mean do you have any cough, sore throat or any flame production recently. To exclude paralytic rabies you can ask about any history of animal bite. To exclude GBS you can ask her is the paralysis ascending in nature I mean going up is it involving your hands as well do you have any respiratory difficulty to exclude any respiratory paralysis to exclude AIP you can ask her about family history and any similar symptoms before after taking carbohydrate rich diet to ask about lead poisoning you can ask her about an involvement with late industry or painting, any abdominal discomfort or cramping. To ask about spinal cord pathology, you can ask her any history of blood clot, blood disease or family history of blood disease, any history of trauma in your back, any history of weight lifting, any problem with your bowel and bladder motion, any problem with your sensation in your feet or any problem with your gate.
if you have already asked about gate before then don't repeat the question here to exclude hereditary spastic paraparesis you can ask about family history or any stiffness noticed in leg musculature similarly you can exclude the muscular dystrophy by asking about family history to exclude inclusion body myositis you can ask about any pain to exclude diabetes in you can directly ask about do you have any diabetes to exclude hypothyroidism do you have any weather preference any cold or hot weather preference any weight gain and to exclude charcot mary tooth disease ask about do you have any deformity in your legs after finishing asking about differential diagnosis you should move on to the point four which is systemic review here you should review all the systems by asking some common questions some general questions can be do you have any fatigue any fever any loss or gain of weight any lumps or bumps in your body if she complains of any weight loss or weight gain ask about how many kgs over how many days then you can ask about central nervous system do you have any headache any blood vision loss of vision you have already asked about sensory problem gait problem and motor problem so don't repeat these questions from cardiovascular system you can ask do you have any chest pain any racing or pacing of heart any shortness of breath any leg swelling from respiratory system you can ask her any cough flame coughing up blood noisy chest runny nose bleeding per nose etc again please don't repeat any questions which you have asked before from genitourinary system you can ask about any change in water work amount color any frothiness in urine any problem with your bowel motion from musculoskeletal system you can ask about any joint pain muscle pain skin rash sexual history is very important especially for women you should ask about ppp i mean three piece pill period and pregnancy so ask her about any history of taking oral contraceptive pills are you pregnant when was your last menstrual period are you sexually active how many partners do you have etc before asking these private questions don't forget to take permission from her if you are a new patient candidate then you may think how can i ask so many questions in a short period of time actually you can do it if you practice well because most of the answers should be no so you can so these questions would not take a lot of time then you can move forward and start point five by asking family history do you have any similar condition running through your family do you have any long-standing disease in your family like any history of diabetes hypertension asthma etc the social questions should be do you smoke or drink and if she smokes how many sticks per day for how long if she drinks how many units per day or per week you can also ask her drug history are you taking any medications any over-the-counter medication any herbal medication etc traveling history is sometimes important to diagnose some cases so ideally you should ask about any recent traveling history especially outside europe menstrual history you have already asked occupational history is very important don't forget to ask about her present job situation if she is employed or unemployed if she is employed then ask her how much your symptoms are affecting your job life any problem with your day-to-day -day life do you need any occupational support or any social support or any financial support if she needs any help then refer her to the respective team for example occupational support team social support team and financial support team at this point you have already gathered a lot of information and now you should move on to point six which is summarization of positive findings let's consider this lady has given you a history of Guillain-Barré syndrome so you can summarize gbs as follows you can simply tell her that according to your history you have mentioned that you have both lower leg weaknesses which is progressive and ascending and you have these symptoms for last three days at present your legs are quite floppy you had a history of diarrhea a few days back which was resolved with some medications and some saline treatment 
you don't have any breathing difficulty at this moment you don't have any similar history before or any diseases running through your family is it all or do you want to add anything else after finishing this part move on to point 7 which is concerns simply ask her do you have any concerns different patients may have different type of concerns the common concerns are what could be the cause of my leg weaknesses doctor if she asks about it then explain her Guillain-Barre syndrome in a simple and easy manner so that a layman can understand you you can start with i appreciate your concern we have to do your full examination and investigation before giving you the confirmed diagnosis but at this point i can tell you that you most likely have Guillain-Barre syndrome please don't bother about the medical terminology i am simply explaining you you have a defense system in your body which should protect you against any external bacteria or virus but in your case your defense system is attacking your nerves instead of attacking the external bacteria and virus and it is causing your nerve damage and due to this nerve damage your lower limbs are getting progressively weaker over the next few days the nerve damage may progress and involve your muscles of breathing which would cause you difficulty in breathing so we need to contact our nerve doctor to take full history and do the relevant examinations and investigations for you and we should admit you to the hospital to monitor you for a few days at this point patient may be very frightened and ask you is it serious doctor am i going to die don't tell any patient that you are going to die or you are going to leave because future is uncertain so be diplomatic you can tell her that i am sorry to tell you that it can be a serious condition if not properly treated so we are going to keep you in close monitoring we will do some blood tests and nerve tests and we would also start some medications on you after finishing addressing for all the concerns of the patient you can move to the last point which is discussion with examiners the examiner may ask you what is your diagnosis you can tell him that my diagnosis is Guillain-Barre syndrome because the patient gave me a history of progressive ascending paralysis for last three days and it is also supported by a history of diarrhea a few days back my second differential diagnosis is transverse myelitis which is a demyelinating condition of spinal cord it can also cause both lower limb weakness and progressive ascending weakness over a few days generally the examiners don't go too deep into each of the cases because there is not enough time to ask you deep questions so next the examiner may ask you about the investigations to differentiate between transverse myelitis and gbs you can tell him that i would at first do the abct protocol and after that i would check for vital capacity nerve conduction study and the gbs would give us a demyelinating picture lumbar puncture can be done and mri of the brain and spinal cord can be done to rule out any demyelinating disease finally the examiner may ask you about the treatment of gbs you can simply tell him that you would monitor the patient's vital sign and if there is a problem with any of the vital signs especially the respiratory problem then you would immediately contact icu for icu admission intravenous immunoglobulin and plasmapheresis are options for treating gbs it takes a lot of time and effort to create these podcasts so if you have got any value from today's video then hit the subscribe button and eventually all my podcasts would be uploaded in this link the link is also given in the description box